It's okay, Aunt. I came to make you a proposition. I have already spoken to your parents about it and they agree. I'm listening to you, Aunt. I want to bring you to town so that you can marry my son. The woman he married is barren. I want to chase her away and give you her place. As you see it. I am already old and I cannot die like this. My son is very rich and he will know how to take care of you. This is really good news for me, Aunt. I agree to accompany you in the town. I can't take it anymore, Lord. Help me, 15 years of childless marriage. Why since then? I have been praying and you have not heard my prayer. While I serve in church, I obey your commandments, even the pagans around me of children, and why do you punish me like this? What did I do to deserve this? When will I see your faithfulness? Why are you crying my darling? Have you already finished processing the documents I sent you? No I wasn't crying. Yes I have already finished the files. Wait. I'll finish the last details, and I'll bring them to your office. Okay, I wait for you. Here are your files. Okay, thanks. Actually, I have something to tell you. But don't get angry. I will resolve the situation. What is the problem? My mother went to the village to look for a girl from there. She wants to give her to me as my wife, so that I can have children. Why does your mother hate me so much? She doesn't hate you, my dear. She's just obsessed with her desire to be a grandmother. Don't worry, I'm not going to let her do it. Why has God not heard our prayer since then? I'm in pain but it doesn't seem to mean anything to him. I am beginning to doubt God's faithfulness. Do not speak like that to Yahweh. Dry your tears and strengthen yourself. God is faithful. If he were not, you would already be dead. It is he who renews your breath of life every morning, and who guides your comings and goings. For that alone, you should admire and recognize God's faithfulness. You're right. Lord forgives my ingratitude and my unbelief. Know that I will always defend you against my mother's whims. This should give you the courage to face this ordeal we are going through with strength. I married you because I love you, not because I want to have children. I bless God for the husband he gave me. You are a wonderful man. Tonight, you're going to sleep in my place. Tomorrow we're going to wait for him to go to work, so you can bring your suitcase and get settled in before they return. Okay, Mom. But know that you must assert yourself. And don't let yourself be mistreated by my daughter-in-law. You have to show my son that you are worthy of him. Okay, Mom. I'm going there to stay. Nothing will make me leave this house. It's true that I have a good CV, but what guarantees that I will be taken? I'm sure they will reject me like all the other companies. Nothing ever goes well for me. I'm just failing. And what's more, I pray morning and evening. It feels like the sky is closed over my head. The demons are constantly chasing me, and won't leave me alone. Where is God in all this? I can't take it anymore. I am shocked and amazed at the way some of God's children pray. They pray to none at the same time their prayer with words of unbelief. Do they not know that words of doubt are powers that act negatively? In James 5 verse 6 it is written that he who asks must do it in faith, without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, tossed by the wind and driven aside by others. His way of praying does not allow God to open the door to work for her. May it be done to her, according to her faith, according to the words she has liberated. Good evening madam. Your secretary asked me to come by today at 5 p.m. Here I am. Okay Miss Amy. We have reviewed your CV. Normally we were supposed to take you but there is a small situation which means that we can no longer do it. However, leave your number with the secretary. If an opportunity arises for you, we will call you. I knew it. I felt it already since I left home that I would not be retained. I'm not even surprised. Really sorry miss. Lord my God, give me a child, I beseech you, see my tears Lord, and have mercy on me. Save me from my mother-in-law's wickedness. Hear me as you heard Sarah, Rebecca, and Anne. 
In the name of Jesus I prayed, Amen. God is not impressed by your cry. It's your faith that will move mountains, not your tears. Darling, would you be willing to do 15 days of fasting and prayers with me? For what reasons? What do you mean for what reasons? We have a mountain in front of us. I really want this year we can have a child. I am ready to fast this whole year if necessary. You know, I don't care if we have kids or not, that's why I don't seem to get too involved in this thing with you. But how you care so much. Let me tell you this. It is of no use to you to fast if you do not believe. You lament all the time like when the Israelites were in the desert. The Lord put many of them to death because of their unbelief. If you don't pray believing that you have already received, you will never be able to have the child you are looking for. So I don't want to waste my time and pray that you come from behind to cancel everything. The day I see you speaking words of faith and put your faith into action, I will support you in this request. Oh, I have an idea. I'm going to help you to listening a message on faith that the pastor has preached. And I will also advise you to read and meditate the word of God more frequently. Thank you, my husband. I will do it. The house is very big and beautiful. Have you got all your stuff set up yet? Yes, my aunt. I've already put everything away. Yes, my aunt. Okay, go cook for your future husband before he comes home. Today I won't do anything else. I'm going to listening to the teaching and after that, I will read the word of God the more I can. Good evening, my son. Good evening, mother. What is the honor of your visit worth to me? I just came to warn you that I have already moved the mother of your children into the house. Her name is Anna. Right now, she is preparing your favorite dish for you. Ah, good. Okay, thank you, mom. It's understood. I'll go meet her at home this evening. Thank you for your efforts. As you have completed your mission, you can return to the village with peace of mind. I will take good care of the one you gave me. You have always been a good, obedient son. I knew you weren't going to object. Okay, I'll go greet your wife and go back. Great. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, my son. Welcome, Mom. Please, spare me your greetings. Tell me instead, when are you going to leave my son's life? I've already brought him the one he needs. She is already living with you at the moment. She is the one who will give me my future grandchildren. Ah, super. What good news. Thank you for bringing this woman for my husband. How so? Aren't you angry? No, mother. The joy of the Lord is my portion. I would also like to take this opportunity to announce that I am pregnant. Serious? Are you not lying to me? No, mother. I'm really pregnant. Congratulations, my daughter. I apologize for bringing another woman. Don't worry, mom. I understand you. Well, goodbye. Take good care of yourself. Have a good trip, mom. Why didn't you tell me your wife is already pregnant? It would have saved me from having to go to the village to look for another woman for you. I didn't want to frustrate you, mom. If you don't want to keep her at home, find a way to send her back to the village. I no longer have time to return to drop her off in her village. I have a lot of files waiting for me back home. Okay, mom. Why did my wife lie that she is pregnant? I'm going to go ask her. Why did you lie to my mother? I told her that to get her to leave me alone, but I also said it as an act of faith. I truly believe that everything I need is already within me. After I finished listening to that teaching, I realized that if the God who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me, I cannot be barren. I also believe that God has already given me everything I need since the first day I prayed as was the case with Daniel. So from today on, I will speak and act like a woman who is already expecting a child to provoke the supernatural. This child that I desire is no longer far from me. He is already in my womb by faith. Oh, yes! I'm glad to see the radical changes that have taken place in your system of thought. 
You must continue to listening to the teaching and read the word of God as necessary, and continue to manifest this gigantic faith. From today I will begin to give thanks to God, as if I have already received. Great my darling. Let's go to the house to bring out this famous Anna. I hope you will like what I prepared. Welcome, darling. Why do you call me like that? Do you yourself feel comfortable coming to stay in a stranger's house like that? Don't ever call me like that again. Get up and grab your things. I'm going to take you to the park, to return to your village. But why are you treating me like this? I came here to give you a child. Shut up and get out of my house. I don't want to upset my wife. God of faithfulness and all power, I ask you for forgiveness for the unbelief I have shown during all these years. I ask your forgiveness for the lamentations that I uttered all day long. Today I decide to trust you, because you are a trustworthy God. You do not betray, nor do you lie, you have said in your word that if I ask anything according to your wishes, I already have that thing that I asked for. So because you want me to be a mother, as you say in Exodus 23 verse 26 no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I firmly believe that you have already given me a child, and I am putting myself in position to receive that child. Thank you Lord for the wonderful God that you are. In the name of Jesus I prayed. Amen. It's been two months since you told my mother that you're pregnant. She is so excited that she wants to come here soon to take care of you. I do not worry. Besides, today, I had planned to go buy some clothes for the baby. And start preparing his room. Really? Faith believes, faith sees, and faith acts. Since I believe I have already received, I act and do exactly what I would have done if the doctor had actually confirmed a pregnancy. You have become a true woman of faith. And yes, faith is like madness. I already see myself every day with my child in my arms. In the name of Jesus. I declare that this position is for me. I receive my work in the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord because you precede me and open the door of work before me. I give you thanks because I know you have already done so. May it be done to you according to your faith. May the work be given to you. And may the child be given to Estelle. I am pleased to announce to you, Madam Estelle, that you are finally pregnant. Glory to God. I expected this and I received according to my faith, my deeds and my words. Thank you God for faithfulness. Thank you Lord for giving me this job. You did more than I thought and asked. Lamentations and doubt block the fulfillment of prayers. When you pray according to the will of God, believe that from that day God has raised you up, even if you have not yet seen the physical manifestation of what you asked for, continue to thank God. I John 5:14-15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Everything you need is already within you, because the one who answers your prayers is God through his Holy Spirit. May God bless you. Whether this is your first or four thousandth day as a Christian, or you aren't sure you really want to be a Christian yet, you've probably heard of this thing Christians call faith. What you might not be sure of is why it's such a big deal. You'll hear people talk about it when things are good, I knew things would turn around if I just had faith. You'll hear people recommend it when they're not sure what to say, I'm sorry you're going through a rough time. Just have faith. And, when others seem unfazed by life's obstacles, they might tell you it's because they have faith. But what does that mean? Hebrews 11, 1 defines faith as confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. 
faith is the result of believing the gospel, the good news that Jesus died for our sin and made a way for us to be right with God and spend eternity in heaven. When we allow the reality of the gospel to affect every part of our lives, it changes the way we think which changes how we behave. Faith causes us to act on what we haven't experienced yet, to believe promises in the Bible that haven't been fulfilled yet, and to trust God when our situations haven't changed yet. 3 Ways Faith Changes Your Life Practically 1. Faith in God Gives You Strength. When I say strength, I don't mean a physical strength to fight bullies. I mean the inner resolve to withstand turmoil. Faith gives you strength, the inner resolve to withstand turmoil. The writer of Psalm 138 says of God, In the day when I cried out, you answered me, and made me bold with strength in my soul. When we are right with God, we never go into turmoil alone. We have the creator of the universe on our side. For example, take David and the story of how he killed Goliath. 1 Samuel 17. At the time, David was a shepherd boy, not a warrior. But when he saw Goliath mocking God's people, David approached the king and asked to go down and fight. Picture the babysitter next door or the kid who delivers your papers telling the president, let me handle this one. David's ability to not be shaken by Goliath's size or insults was the result of David's faith in God. David tells the king, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. 1 Samuel 17 37 David had faith that God would defeat the giant and deliver his people, so David stood up to the king and then to the giant. 2. Faith in God gives you courage. Courage and strength aren't the same things even though they are often seen together. Courage is the ability to do what scares us, to act on our beliefs despite threats of danger, to show strength in face of grief or pain. Courage, like strength, comes directly from our faith in God. Our confidence that heaven is real will directly affect the risks we're willing to take. If death is the worst thing that can happen to someone, how do you hurt the person who believes there is a better life waiting after this one? Esther is a good example of a woman whose faith made her courageous. She was in constant danger not because of what she was doing, but simply because of who she was, a Jew. At a politically tumultuous time, Esther navigated tricky waters well and delivered the Israelites from an evil man's bitter vendetta. But it took courage to stay. Check out Esther 7 to see how she endured the schemes of her enemy and gained favor with the king to save her people. 3. Faith in God provides stability. Have you ever met someone who seemed unshakable? The co-worker who takes a deep breath when the computer crashes instead of slamming her head on the desk. The mom who manages to keep her calm as her kids' last-minute requests pile up. We all want to persevere through the day without melting down or throwing a tantrum, despite how we feel at times. Faith in God is what allows us to experience stability in the middle of instability. When life feels out of control, we take comfort in knowing that God is in control. In the Bible, Daniel's life provides several examples of stability in the face of instability. Daniel and many other Israelites were kidnapped and forced to join the Babylonian king's service. This meant new food, new clothes, new language, new customs, and new everything. But even though Daniel was a hostage, he stayed true to what he knew about God. He wouldn't eat the things that God had told the Israelites not to eat, and God blessed him for it. Daniel 1, 1-8 Daniel was eventually promoted into the king's royal court, where some people didn't like his worship of God instead of the king. Government officials tried to pin something on Daniel, but they could find no corruption in him, because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Daniel 6, 4. They plotted against him, but Daniel stayed true to God, just as he had done before. Daniel 6, 10. Faith can do a lot of things in your life if you let it. It will grow you and allow you to do things you never thought yourself capable of. It will turn you into a dreamer who really believes that with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19 26. What next step can you take in faith today? Brothers and sisters, that's it all for this video. If you like this video, feel free to like it, comment and share around you so that many souls be saved and restored. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sentinel channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. God bless you.